Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Certainly, my guest, Mrs. Meeker. Claudia, this is our cue to leave your beloved husband in the lurch. Mr. Norton! You can't do that to me. You're my partner. I'm not. Our partnership has nothing to do with it. Mrs. Meeker is the chairman of the presentation committee, and she is nobody's partner. Uh, Mr. Norton, I'll be with you in just a tiny little moment, uh, just as soon as I finish with Mrs. Joe. She distinctly did not say Mrs. Norton. She said Mr. Norton. She did not say Norton and Killian. She just said Norton. That doesn't make any difference. We designed the Redbury Town Hall together. You're breaking my heart. Come on, Claudia. We can't stay at this opening ceremony all day. We were both awarded the key to the city of Redbury. It isn't even a city. It's a township. Township, city, that doesn't matter. But you're, you're a traitor, and that does. You can talk to Mrs. Meeker, too. Isn't he awfully abusive this morning for an architect? Particularly an architect who was, has just been awarded a scroll. Mm, you were awarded a scroll, too, and now you're unwilling to pay for it. I haven't been asked to pay for it by anyone who counts. He's got to take Bluff back to New York, Roger. He can't wait for Mrs. Meeker to talk to David. Bluff can wait. You can take the train, David. We'll meet you. If you two walk off and leave me here with this... Oh, this... there you are, Mr. Norton. Oh, won't you come over here? I- I'm afraid to leave my registration book. Uh, well, certainly, Mrs. Meeker. I'll, I'll be glad to. If you leave me now... Oh, Mr. Norton, it must be so exciting to be an architect. Uh, don't you have the most thrilling experience? Well, uh, I never exactly think of them as thrilling, Mrs. Meeker, but sometimes they are very satisfying. Satisfying? Oh, what a beautiful way of putting it, Mr. Norton. We here in Redbury are so thrilled with our new town hall that we can't help thinking how very, very thrilling it must be for you. Oh, oh, oh. he just laps this up your husband, doesn't he? I have to take out all his hats and have them stretched. I don't see why we should wait any longer. He isn't going to let that woman stop praising him. Roger and that poor dog sitting out in the car starving to death. But he'd feel so much better if he knew that his master had just been given the keys to Redbury. And, Mr. Norton, the excitement of seeing it all take shape under your hands, it must make you feel just like uh, Michelangelo. Well, not all of the time, Mrs. Meeker. The minute Mayor Collins announced that we were going to have this official opening, I said we've got to give Mr. Norton the keys to the city and a special scroll with flowers. It was very generous of you, Mrs. Meeker. (laughs) Generous. It was nothing to the way we felt. And you know, Mr. Norton... You're uh, really very young to be such a marvelous architect. Well, Roger, I really don't see how David can expect us to stay here when he's having such a wonderful time and nobody's even talking to us. Look at that smile on his face. I haven't seen him so happy since the day we (laughs) lost two important commissions. David's only vice, Roger, is that he just hates people to praise him and fuss over him and baby him. Mm, He'll grow up. Mr. Norton, I can't see why you should be in such a hurry to go back to New York. Well, Mrs. Meeker, well, um, well, I, I mean, we, we have a number of other things we have to do, uh, building skyscrapers and things like that. Oh, I wish you could stay this afternoon anyway. We could have lunch at my house. I have the sweetest little guest house, and uh, I would like you to give an opinion on it. Well, that's very good of you, Mrs. Meeker, but you see, I, I do have to get back to New York and... When you say lunch, you you see, I have... Of course, it uh, isn't a guest house uh, yet. <laughs> it's only a chicken coop. But I know you'd have the most original ideas for well, changing it over. I'm afraid that's uh, a little out of my line, Mrs. Meeker. You see, my partner and I specialize in industrial architecture. Industrial architecture? Oh, how romantic. Uh, at least you will come to lunch and, and tell me all about it, won't you? Uh, by the way, Mrs. Meeker, have you met my partner, Mr. Killian? 
He's uh, here, you know, and I, I think you'll find he has a lot more to say than I have. No. No, I haven't met your partner. But uh, surely, Mr. Norton, you don't need each other just to eat lunch. Well, I, I think this would be a very good time, Mrs. Meeker, for you to meet Mr. Killian. You'd find him a man of wide experience. You're uh, much younger than he, aren't you? Oh, he's a brilliant conversationalist, and he's standing right over here. Where is he? Where did they go? What did you say? I, I said he's gone. He's disappeared. They can't do this to me. Well, after all, Mr. Norton, he has a perfect right to go. Oh, this works out perfectly. Now you can come to my house for lunch. Uh, no, I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, I, I, I have to find Mr. Killian. But I've been expecting you. After all, you don't need him just to have lunch. Oh, I'm sorry, I do. I, I must find him this minute, and, and my wife, too. Your wife? Oh. They have the keys to my car. Oh, I have a car, Mr. Norton. I suppose I ought to be very grateful to you two for waiting at all. We weren't going to. It was awfully mean of you to sneak out ahead of time and catch us. And it was also very mean of you to keep poor Bluff waiting so long for his lunch. Where will we take him? We ought to celebrate a little, don't you think? Champagne for us and a soup bone for Bluff. I think it's a beautiful town hall and it's going to look even nicer in 200 years. We really did do a pretty good job. They seemed to like it, didn't they? Oh, sure. All Mrs. Meeker was thinking about just now was those marvelous limestone columns. They aren't limestone anyway. They're marble. Isn't that funny? I thought I heard her say limestone when she gave me the scroll. <laughs> I think she did it that. <laughs> but isn't it nice to know that even these slight inaccuracies don't prevent the audience from liking our work? If they didn't like it, they ought to be shot. Aren't we a little bloodthirsty? I would have thought that you'd be satisfied just scratching their eyes out. <laughs> We've got to feed Bluff. Where can we take him? Anywhere. Name the place. Anywhere we can go, Bluff can go too. We've got a scroll that says we're honorary citizens of Redbury. They, you see that in? That beautiful place there on the right? Mm, that's the Stone Fort Inn. Has the best onion soup in Nutmeg County. Let's drive in. R Bluff has never had onion soup. Well, here is where he tries it. Maybe we'd better leave him in the car until we find out if they'll take dogs, even with the keys to Redbury. Honestly, Roger, nobody could say no to Bluff. Such a nice dog. But if you insist he stays in the car, I'm staying with him. And if you stay in the car, I'm staying with you. Well, I guess I'm selected to show our credentials to the head waiter. Uh, don't let Bluff eat off a leg. Uh, we'll have him fed in a minute. <laughs> You're right. Who could refuse that dog? It's really wonderful to travel around with a famous pair of architects. You're almost as good as a lock picker. You can get us in anywhere. Well, that's so sweet. I'm driven to thanking you. Does that scroll give you the right to kiss me before lunch? I don't know. I really haven't read it all through. Maybe it wasn't so silly to wait in the car. That kiss was nice. I wonder what's holding up Roger. <laughs> They were decidedly unpleasant. Maybe if they'd seen Bluff instead of the scroll, they would have let him come in. I can't see why people are so persnickety about dogs in restaurants. Not everyone is. Just that stone fort in. They're known for their onion soup and stuffiness. <laughs> we'll find a much better place further on. This time, I'm going to go inside and tackle the innkeeper, and I'll use the keys instead of the scroll. Hmm. By the way, I just remembered that in another few miles, we'll be coming to the coach wheel in. Onion soup? Uh, not exactly. Leg of lamb. Doesn't sound quite festive enough for the occasion. But uh, the people are a good deal more hospitable. We won't have any trouble with love. We heard you. Mm. And he's not sure whether to believe it or not. Well, you just leave it to me. <laughs> That was the Coach Wheel Inn. Their manners were more like a steamroller. I thought surely they'd allow us to bring in a dog. Especially today. So you two men aren't half as important as we three thought you were. Uh, oh, we're important, all right. It's just that nobody agrees with us. I'm ashamed it's happened in front of Bluff. He's going to be terribly disillusioned. Claudia, 
Great Danes thrive on disillusionment. They're big enough so they can stand a lot of it. The trouble is, your dog is too big, at least too big for an inn. Uh, we ought to have a miniature Dane uh, that you could carry in your sleeve. If we don't <laughs> feed him, he'll become a miniature. This is desperate. <laughs> what are you going to do? He's hungry and so am I. I know what we're not going to do. We're not going to bring him to another celebration at Redbury. Maybe not even you. That is a big help. Or next time, we'll bring along a picnic lunch for the dog that and you. That's a big help now, too. <laughs> Isn't there another inn along here someplace? Yes, yes, I, I know the place. It's only about half a mile more to the River Million. Leg of lamb? Caviar. Ooh. I'm afraid our scrolls won't be much help there, either. I'm afraid you're right. All I can say is if somebody would given Bluff a scroll, he'd do a lot better for us than we have for him. Yep. There's the River Million. Hey, David, aren't you going to stop? Not even. Did you see that door, man? What's the next place? I see one. Where? There up ahead. On the left. What? That? That? That, that diner, that greasy spoon. They wouldn't even be able to read our scroll. They wouldn't even have a lock to fit our Redbury keys. In that case, maybe they'll let us in. Honestly, you two jokes. Do. This is a big celebration, darling. We can't hold it in a little diner. Can we take Bluff anywhere else? <laughs> what makes you think you can get him in here? I'm, I'm going in, not going in this time, and find out. Neither am I. Then why don't you send Bluff in and see if he can get them to take us? Might work at that, darling. Hmm. I can taste my Salisbury steak already. <laughs> you mean hamburger with? <laughs> with everything. This is a very special occasion. Well, here goes. Wish Bluff luck. Now, Bluff, you've got to be very polite. Oh, yes. Show them you know how to curl your little finger under. <laughs> and don't forget to tell them that I'm starving. Well, it's now or never. Go on, open the door, Roger. I just can't wait to see one poor little dog do what two big architects couldn't. Bluff. Hey, Bluff. Don't you forget the rest of us. I wish we'd thought of this at the Stone Fort. The food there is really much better. Not so fast, Roger. We still haven't got in here yet. But we're going to. Listen. You see? They've given Bluff the keys to the diner. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you hear your men folks talk about having a Coca-Cola cooler right on the job, does it ever occur to you that you have a white cooler in your own kitchen? Keep the family refrigerator well stocked with Coke, and you can work refreshed, too. Goodness knows you keep going hard enough all day long, so you'll find the pause that refreshes more than welcome. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. <laughs>